Aloha and shalom, my friends. I'm setting up for our activation here. For those of you who are new to these activations, they happen every single week and they've been going on for years. So a pretty amazing global community has formed around these meetings. You'll know when we're doing them because they always occur each of the four quarters of the lunar cycle. So we are just about at the final quarter. To be exact, it'll be tomorrow. So the final quarter is a week after the full moon. Last week was the full moon activation, which was all about the fullness of the picture. We saw with clarity, with full illumination, what we've really been going through this past month. It's like, okay, all out on the table, all cards out on the table. And now a week after that, we're ready to close up this past cycle so that we could create space for next week's new cycle to begin, the new moon. So final quarter is kind of fun because it's the in-between week. It's when we're closing up one cycle and preparing for a new one. So we're ready to finalize what we've learned let go, surrender, make peace with what has gone on all month and open up to a new lesson and a new monthly theme. <clears throat> it doesn't actually have anything to do with the moon, these activations. The moon is just a marker of time. What the moon is reflecting to us, though, is, is a, a symbol of, of what's going on inside of us and all around us. The moon is just one reflection and such a simple and easy reflection to keep us on track. So that's why we use it. I'm just going ahead and shuffling in all of your energies as you tune in. Let me know in the comments where in the world you're tuning in from. I see North Carolina, I see West Virginia. I'm tuning in from the lovely and magical Sedona, Arizona. And while we're shuffling and people are tuning in from all over, go ahead and share this live with your friends, your family, your favorite groups, anyone that you think could help activate the message or activate the portal further, or anybody you think could really use an uplifting and inspiring message. And if you're new to these videos, we use tarot and we also use the Hebrew alphabet. It's gonna be uh, flipped on the camera, of course. I made these Hebrew cards, aren't they super neat? Let's see, we have Lake Michigan, Seattle, Canada. Hello. I did create this new page, Royal Path Tarot. It's separate from my profile. And so I'm hoping that everyone will see that we've moved over here to this space because I'll be going live here from now on. So again, for those of you tuning in, go ahead and share while we're live with your family, your friends, your favorite groups, so that um, everyone can have a chance to jump into the live portal. And if you'd rather wait till the end of the video, the recording will be posted on YouTube, Rebecca Magic, and also Instagram, Rebecca Magic. So you can share it as well from those sources if somebody you know doesn't use Facebook. I've got water in hand, and I've got heat at my feet because I have to be warm and hydrated to be most com comfortable to be a conduit. <laughs> so good to see you guys tuning in. Okay, just uh, pausing, taking a moment to give thanks in advance to these faces, archetypes, facets of the one they're really just different angles of your own mind, of our shared collective universal mind. So when I say, and when I invite you to connect with the deck, just know that what you're doing is tuning in to all the pieces that make up the whole you, that make up the whole one, the whole of all creation. They're not outside of you, they're within you and, and all around you. Everything is connected. You know that already. So connect with the deck. 
how you know how. Use your imagination. Everything is mind. Everything is about imagination. You can see yourself shrinking and jumping into the deck. You can see a thread of light coming out of your inner eye or your heart to the deck. Have fun with it. Okay, so for this final quarter moon, we're coming to the end of the cycle, preparing for a new. What is the challenge for this week? When we pull this first card, it's going to represent the wisdom that we need to keep at the forefront of our mind, meaning it's the opportunity that we're facing right now for growth. The challenge is also the gift. So some of us may feel more on the challenging end of this, and some of us may feel more on the blessing end of this. But for all of us, the underlying theme is going to be the same. And as we move through the challenge with conscious awareness and we respond with that conscious awareness, instead of just reacting, we respond consciously, we will move the energy from challenge to blessing. We will unlock the blessing within the challenge, okay? So that's gonna be the first card. All right, so the challenge of the week. We're also gonna pull a card for the future. What is a peek into the future? A little hint that could help add to the understanding of the challenge we're currently facing, sort of a, an inspirational focus so that we can feel empowered to move through this challenge. And then with the Hebrew cards, we'll pull an ally an ally force, a supportive force, the main one, because they're all our allies. But who is the main one for this week? All right, we've got three cards. It looks like this. Just give you a little peek. I've got the four agreements over my shoulder there. I'm sitting in my my mini chair right now it's a mini little desk it's actually my son's little desk and that's his four agreements paper there behind me Alrighty, beginning with the challenge of the week da, da, da. we begin with a bang the magician the number one card of the entire deck it's a major arcanum card. And if this is the challenge, what does it mean for us? The magician is all about purpose and will. Okay, he has one hand up, one hand down. This hand is connected to source, that infinite source energy, unlimited power and potential. And then one hand down showing that he's here to do something with that power. He is the conduit, he is the bridge for that power to come through him and do something here on this earth plane. So it's about purpose and it's about will because we are here with a purpose. We're not here to just create anything. We're here to create things that are going to better all of life, things that are going to serve the creator and all of creation. And so to unlock the ultimate potential within the magician card, within the magician archetype, within yourself, we have to consider what our highest purpose is. On earth as it is in heaven, we're all here with the same purpose to bring heaven to earth, to bring the light of compassion, the light of creator, the light of the virtues into manifested form through us, through our senses. We all share that purpose. And then what it looks like for each of us is different. It looks different for each of us. It means different jobs, different projects, different relationships. But essentially what we're all doing behind the names and the faces and the places and the details is bringing heaven to earth. It also requires our will because we have free will. We come here with free will. We don't have to follow this mission. But whatever we do that is not in alignment with that mission is a futile pursuit. And we will keep going like a hamster on a wheel until we get that. 
And you can make as many mistakes as you want and you can take as long as you want because time doesn't really matter. It's real, there's really no such thing as time. And the mistakes don't matter either because whatever we create out of a, that lower state, whatever we create that is anything less than bringing heaven to earth, whatever we create that is a low vibration, can't go with us beyond this body anyway. So it's like, when are we gonna get it? When are we gonna get that we are here to bring heaven to earth, that we are here to bring light into the world, to create more light? There's not a more worthy pursuit. The only thing that lasts forever is light. So if this is the challenge this week, as we're at the time of the final quarter moon, ready to start a new cycle next month, what does that mean? It's saying the challenge right now is to feel and to create really a renewed sense of purpose for ourselves, in our lives, in our relationships, in all situations on this material plane. And remember, it's not just a challenge, it's also a gift. So be excited about it. Have fun with it. Make it your focus. And what that looks like this week is examining your relationships, right? Remaining in the observer's perspective. So rise above to that observer's perspective and rest there. So as you're communicating with people in your life, as you're communicating with your loved ones, with your friends, as you're communicating with anyone, even as you're communicating with your own self inside your head, pose the question, how can I use this relationship to self, to others who are also the self? How can I use these relationships or this relationship to bring that light into creation? How can I step it up? How can I renew the purpose of each of my relationships? Because that's what adds value to the relationship. That's what adds value to our lives, to our existence and to the world. So as you are relating, as you are communicating inside your own head with yourself and with others, ask the question, how can I renew my purpose? How can I bring more light into this relationship and into this world through this relationship? Okay, and not just with your relationships, but also with your job, with any projects you have going on, you have to ask yourself, is this job, is this relationship, is this project, is this pursuit a vessel for me to bring more light into this world? Is there an opportunity in, within this relationship or job or whatever it is to, to do my purpose, to live my purpose? And if not, perhaps it's time to consider letting go of that relationship, letting go of that job, or at least transforming the way that we relate to that person or the way that we relate to that job. We either need to create a shift within the relationships and the projects, or we need to completely walk away and start anew. Because unless there's opportunity to live our purpose within each of our relationships, meaning unless there's opportunity, unless there is an opportunity to bring more light into the world through that relationship or through that job, what are you doing there? What are you doing? You will never feel fulfilled. You will never feel purposeful. You will never feel whole if you give your energy and your time and your thoughts, your power to people or situations that are not providing a space for you to be your highest self, for you to, came, come, for you to do what you came here to do. If you can't be who you came here to be, if, if those situations are not providing an opportunity for you to be that highest light, that you truly came here to be, it's a waste of your time to walk away or create a shift within that situation or within that relationship. Otherwise, you're never going to feel fulfilled. And there are ways, even, even in, you know, passing by a stranger, the way that we communicate with them, we can ask, how can I create more light in this opportunity? Well, I might have just in the past walked right past this stranger, I might have just kept walking. But now that I'm remembering the challenge and gift this week, this opportunity that we have this week, 
I'm gonna take one second to wave. I'm gonna take one extra second to smile, to look directly into that person's eyes. Just with a stranger. And boom, right there, you're accessing this opportunity, this potential to bring more light into the world. And you can do this anytime. It doesn't just have to be this week. But you have to know that we're pulling this card. We're speaking of this archetype for a reason. Nothing's random. What, what we're saying essentially is that this week there is a heightened opportunity for us to capitalize on this energy. So really keep it at the forefront of your mind. Your purpose, what you came here to do, what we all came here to do, bring more light into the world. Bring heaven to earth. So we're going to remember that in everybody we come across. And when we look at ourselves in the mirror, and when we go to work, or when we're working on a project, or working on our art, remembering our purpose, bringing the light of our purpose into our creations, into our relations, and knowing that our efforts will be multiplied this week because of our current opportunity here. And the more you use your will, you choose to participate in this process, the more the universe is gonna go, wow, look at all the efforts you're making. I'm gonna match that. I'm gonna multiply that. Okay, so the challenge this week is bringing more purpose into everything that we do. Remembering our purpose, remembering our power, and therefore accessing it, okay? There, there are some affirmations, some mantras, some statements that you could say in order to tune in to the power of this archetype, power of the magician that lives within you and within all of creation. It looks like this, okay? If you're calling upon the magician within, it looks like this. I remember the card that comes before me, the fool. I remember, zero, fool, source. I remember the source of all creation. I know I'm connected to that infinite source of power and potential. I know what I'm here to do with that light, life, love, truth, power, potential. I am a vessel for that to come through. I know that I'm one with the elements and that the elements are my tools. I am connected to them. I can use the elements as my allies. We are in alliance. We share a purpose of bringing heaven to earth. So I call upon the elements. I remember to clearly define the elements in my mind and in my heart as they relate to me, as I am one with them. I know that if I use my power, my magic, for self-serving purposes, I will be cut off from that source. I know that if I stay connected to selflessness, innocence, oneness consciousness, I will remain connected to that all-powerful source. I know that the only pursuit that is worthy of my focus, my attention, my awareness, is the pursuit of bringing heaven to earth, the pursuit of bringing the light of the virtues into manifested form through me. And if you have my book, The Royal Path, there is a chapter on the magician. It talks about how to connect with this archetype within yourself. It goes deeper than what I've just shared. Uh, at the end of the chapter, it gives you the Hebrew letter correlation, a little bit about that. And at the end of the book, there are questions that you might wanna ask yourself in order to go deeper with activating this archetype within you. I also have a 90 minute class, recorded class on the magician. If you wanna know more about the symbols within the card, just reach out to me, private message me, and I can send it to you. So this is the challenge of the week. Asking ourselves, okay, as I'm closing up one cycle and preparing for the new moon next week, new cycle, how can I really activate my purpose? And from that new, newly activated space, revisit my relationships, my projects, my career, and refine those relationships, those projects, that career. Why are we doing this? Let's pull the card now that is going to give us a peek into the future. Woo. Two of Pentacles. And this makes a lot of sense to me in regard to what we just shared. Okay, the Two of Pentacles is about juggling different ideas before we make our choices to manifest any of them. 
really weighing our options, weighing our opportunities within our mind, not saying yes or no yet, just kind of feeling into the different potential opportunities that are there. Playing with it. Sometimes we need to put one foot in to really get an idea whether we want to do something or don't want to do something. Sometimes we have to kind of test the waters. I know I'm that way, very much so. So we're activating our power and purpose right now so that we have the energy to juggle these different potentials, these different opportunities in our mind so that we can then, with this renewed sense of purpose, really know in our hearts which opportunities are worth going after, which opportunities are gonna bring the most, uh, the most opportunity for us to live our purpose, for us to bring the light of the virtues into the world. Okay, so we renew our purpose so that when the opportunities get thrown at us and we start having these new ideas, we will be able to, from a, a clear perspective, know which ones to choose and which ones to let go of. Okay, so that's what's ahead. We're gonna receive some opportunities to manifest. We're gonna receive some new vision, some new ideas. And instead of going down this route of, oh, I don't know which one is for me. I'm, I'm a little nervous that if I take this one, then I'll miss out on this opportunity. Or, um, you know, I'm afraid I'll always be stuck undecided. Instead of going that route, we will be so clear because of the work we're doing this week in renewing our purpose and getting really clear with our purpose. We will feel so clear that we will be able to tell ourselves, it's okay to juggle these things for now. I need to feel into each of these opportunities a bit. And as I do, I will know in the perfect timing exactly which ones are going to bring the most opportunity for me to live my purpose. Okay, so there's gonna come a point where we're juggling a little bit in our mind. You can go one of two ways. You can either go down the fearful route and say, oh gosh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to make a decision. What if I make the wrong decision? Or you can go the other route and say, no, I, I've just solidified my purpose. I've just renewed my purpose within my mind and my heart. And because of that, I know it's okay to play around with these ideas because I trust that in the perfect moment, I will make the decision to go this way or that. I might not know right away which opportunity is going to uh, be the best in regard to living my purpose. But if I just give it a little time and I stay patient and I try them both out and stay open, then in the perfect timing, I will know which opportunity to fully focus on and which one to let go of. Okay, so if we have all these opportunities coming up and we're gonna be juggling them and trying to decide which ones to, to go full force with and which ones not to, it's going to obviously be helpful right now to really get clear with our purpose before those opportunities are thrown at us. Don't you see, doesn't that make sense? So really step into your power, step into your purpose. And this is the other part of it too. By the way, we had a number one, now number two. Check out the numbers just to point that out. If we get really clear with our purpose now, then by the time of the new moon and the next cycle when we get opportunities thrown at us, they will better reflect that space of clarity in our purpose. Does that make sense? So the more you get in touch with your inner magician, the more you get in touch with your purpose and your power and why you are here, then the opportunities that come are going to reflect that. On the other hand, if you don't really give this challenge your all and you half-ass it or you just don't really care, then you're going to have a weaker magician archetype, a weaker magician perspective within yourself. And then your opportunities that come next are gonna reflect that. And you'll have to do more work just to be taught through these opportunities who you are, why you came here. But why don't we just right now establish that understanding, that knowing of who we are and why we're here so that we don't have to do all that work just to remember who we are and why we're here. Let's remember now so that our opportunities help us bring that light into the world so that our op the opportunities that come help us by saying, hey, you know who you are now? Well, here's an opportunity to show the world who you are. Here's an opportunity to express who you already know you are. Let's solidify that, let's crystallize that. Let's show the world 
who you are, what you can do, what you do best. But if you're not clear on who you are and you're not clear on your purpose and you don't feel empowered, then all of the opportunities that come your way are just gonna be lessons to help you get to that place of empowerment and remembrance. Okay, so the work that you do this week, the effort that you put in this week into activating the Magician Archetype is going to reflect the opportunities that, that follow, the opportunities on their way. Does that not make sense? As we're closing up this cycle, we're being given the opportunity to really remember our purpose before the next cycle comes with fresh opportunities and lessons. Also, the suit of pentacles is mind to matter. It's about manifestation. It begins in the mind. And so it's saying if you want to have higher realizations, if you want to have brighter revelations, you want to have more creative and, and prosperous visions, then you need to get into this place of empowerment this week. You need to activate that magician within you so that you feel inspired, so that you can go to those places in your mind, so that you can then manifest those beautiful visions into creation. Okay, so to the degree that you develop this magician within you, to the degree to which you activate the magician within you, will reflect in your opportunities that are coming. If you wanna make something in this world, if you wanna manifest something powerful and beautiful and helpful for all, then obviously you first, right now, before that new cycle starts next week, need to really get in touch with the magician. And who is the ally this week as we go through this? I pulled this as an ally for somebody yesterday. And if you're watching this, you know who you are. This is the Hebrew letter Nun. You can Google it, N-U-N. It's the 14th letter of the Aleph Bet, the Hebrew alphabet. And the hieroglyphic symbol that the Nun is connected to is a seed. It's a seed which holds the blueprint for the fruit, right? Within the seed is contained the fruit. It's contained all the other stages. It's also connected to card 14 in the tarot, which is the temperance card, also known as the alchemist. Okay, so if this is the ally, it's saying right now we're planting a seed. The temperance card is the one who creates the blueprint for the next cycle, the next lesson, the next experience. So that's the ally right now. We are the creator of the, the next experience we're going to have. And we already said this a moment ago, so you could see very clearly how it ties in. If we wish to bring beautiful things into creation, into manifestation, it first starts in the mind. So if we want to have beautiful visions, and beauty is equal to the virtues, okay, true beauty is in reflection of the light of the virtues, which ultimately, together, all those virtues, all those light, you know, all the frequencies of the different virtues make up the all virtuous light of compassion. So if we want to manifest the ultimate beauty, if we want to bring in these creations of true beauty, we need to first have beautiful visions. We need to have virtuous visions. And in order to do that, we must activate in a powerful way the magician within. Because in order to have those beautiful and compassionate visions, we need to remember, like the magician, that we are connected to source because that, that's where our power is going to come from. That's, where all, that's how we tune into our potential and the power that's going to manifest all these things. And we need to have an awareness of our purpose, bringing it down to earth, bringing it through us and into creation. So the magician is where it begins. If we want to have those beautiful and compassionate visions to create beautiful and compassionate creations, then we need to start with the magician. And the magician is the one who will plant the seed for these future creations. Know that it's up to you. 
Okay, the opportunities are coming. But those opportunities are going to reflect the lessons that you need to learn. So stop asking to learn again and again who you are and why you're here. Remember that once and for all. Solidify this knowing that the magician in you already knows. I'm connected to an unlimited source of power and potential. And I know what I'm here to do with that. If you have that down, then of course, all of the opportunities that come to you next are going to give you opportunities to express that empowered light, that newly empowered and activated light. And we talked about this a little bit this past week. Um, there are some videos on my YouTube channel, also on the wall here, about how the light of goodness is connected to the light of wisdom, to the degree that we embody goodness and kindness and compassion is the degree to which we will evolve, ascend, you know, grow, expand psychologically and spiritually. So if you want to go to that next level, you have to do regular acts of kindness because that is the vessel for the wisdom to then come in. Okay, so remember that if you wish to bring beautiful things into your life and into the world, you really need to stay connected to your true magician within. The one who remembers where the real power is coming from. Not from the small self, but from the larger one self, the source of all creation. Right there, if we're not tapped into that, we are not tapping into our fullest potential. We also need to remember what our purpose is. We're not here to be self-serving, but we're here to serve the one self. So when we're in that selfless state and we're in that, that, that space of an activated mission, then we will access the deepest initiation of all the rest of the cards, of all the other archetypes. When you remember your purpose, you are so powerful. You then access all of the other archetypes within you to work for that purpose. And when that happens, you, we, all, us, and the archetypes work together as an alliance to bring heaven to earth. We're winning when we do that. When we remember our purpose, we can delegate to all the other archetypes. All right, guys, this is our shared mission. This is what we all got to do. And when each of the archetypes remembers that mission and that purpose, they use their unique wisdom for that purpose. And then they share this one ideal and they become a unified force that moves through you. They need your help. They need your help and you need their help. We work together. Okay, so just to sum it up, the opportunities that are coming, and there will be many, will reflect the lessons that we learn right now. So if we activate our purpose, our power, remember our potential, the opportunities that come will reflect that. And we will have beautiful vi visions which will come into beautiful manifestations. The allies, the seed, know that we're planting the seed right now for the new cycle that's coming next week. What do you want it to look like? Don't you want what is coming to, to reflect this, this state of knowing and faith and trust in your mission, your purpose? So that's it. That's the challenge of the week. The magician, remember who you are. You're the one planting the seeds for the future. What opportunities do you really want to come your way? Ones that are going to bring temporary pleasure, temporary satisfaction, for what? Or would you rather really get clear right now on the truth, the truth that what you really want are opportunities to bring more light into this world because light is the only thing that's everlasting and light will serve you and all of creation here now and forevermore. And that includes your children and your children's children and your children's children's children forever. So really sit with that this week. So the challenge is the magician. The challenge is remembering who you are, why you're here. So that when you call in those opportunities that are inevitably on their way, 
They will be ones that will help you to continue to grow, to continue to live your purpose. Not just challenges that are going to help you remember who you are. We're already remembering. So may our opportunities bring us those chances to keep going, to keep growing, to keep glowing, to keep bringing more light into the world so we can actually get to our mission and not have to keep hitting ourselves on the head just so we could wake up and remember why we're even here. You're planting seeds for the future. What's it all for? Make it worth your time. And when you do, the hard work feels lighter. It feels easier all of a sudden because you remember you're not alone. You remember that it's, it's not even your power that's doing all this. All you have to do is get out of the way, surrender, and allow the forces of nature, the forces of the universe to move through you and do the work that we all came here to do. And when you live that way with renewed sense of purpose, connected to your power, who you truly are, you're uplifted. You feel joyful. Everyone around you feels joyful. It's like this beautiful, positive domino effect. All of your problems will start to fade away. And the challenges you face only become opportunities to keep going, keep growing. And I think that's really what we all want. Thank you guys for joining me for this activation, for helping me to pull in this message. I'm really looking forward to next week's new moon, new cycle. Really, you know, not jumping ahead, but taking the time along with you all who are doing the work, taking the time this week to really connect to my purpose, to the elements. Really knowing that whatever opportunities are going to come next are going to reflect the work that I do this week. So I'm really going to sit with that and I thank you for doing that with me. Again, you can share this video with family and friends. It's also about to go to YouTube and Instagram, Rebecca Magic. Make sure you hit like on this new page, Royal Path Tarot, because this is where I'm going to be going live from now on. Um, and thank you for joining my private groups, Shabbat Crew and the Royal Path. Thank you for your support, for your purchases of my books this week. I'm so grateful for your feedback and so grateful to see how they've helped you and for your reviews on my page. If you have been following these activations and you really enjoy them or it's helping you in some way, if you want to leave a review on the Royal Path Tarot page, I would be so grateful to hear from you. And um, what else? My new book is coming out soon. I finally finished illustrating it and coloring it and it will be published very soon. If you have a favorite children's publisher, please private message me and let me know who your favorite publisher is before I go ahead and choose one. I'd love to hear from you all. And I hope you have a wonderful, amazing, magical, miraculously positive rest of your week. Aloha. Deep, deep, infinite gratitude. Peace in, y'all.